Welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Lori Mickelson and I am the pastor of the Northern Lights Christian Fellowship Church of the Nazarene here in Chewin. It seems like we just got the Christmas season behind us and here we are at Lent. Lent is the season of cleaning our spiritual house, so to speak. This is how Google describes this season. Lent is marked by fasting, both from some foods and events. Lent is the season to observe and remember the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior and Redeemer. Lent gives us the opportunity to do some soul searching, to reflect, reevaluate, and allow the Holy Spirit to do some spiritual transformation in our lives. Let's pray. Grace and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, who came to take away the sin of the world. Grace and peace from God the Holy Spirit, who convicts us, cleanses us, and is committed to helping us reflect God's holy image in our world today. Amen. Our main scripture for today is found in John 2, 13 to 22. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove the sheep and the cattle, scattered the money changers' coins over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from scriptures. Passion for God's house will consume me. But the Jewish leaders demanded, what are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What, they exclaimed? It has taken 46 years to build this temple and you can rebuild it in three days? But when Jesus said this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus said. John tells us that it's the season of Passover, that special time of the year when the Jewish people were cel would celebrate their freedom and remember when God rescued them from a life of s slavery. It was a time of remembering, rejoicing, and reflection, a time to completely realize that their God was the God of creation and would protect them, provide for them, and lead them to experience a life of progressive holiness if they would only listen and obey. But it was also a time for them to do some cleaning out their spiritual house. Let's go back for a moment to Exodus 12, verse 15, where we read, For seven days the bread you eat must be made without yeast. On the first day of the festival, remove every trace of yeast from your homes. Anyone who eats bread made with yeast during the seven days of this festival will be cut off from the community of Israel. Over the years, this commandment of God had become an important part of preparing one's home and heart for Passover. In order to be kosher for Passover, one's home had to be thoroughly clean from top to bottom. One also had to do a bit of soul scrubbing and soul polishing as well. So the people had been cleaning up their homes and lives to prepare. They did their best to get rid of any type of physical or spiritual leaven that would be considered unclean or holy. Now this is what Jesus was doing, cleaning up his father's house. Remember back to Luke chapter 2 where Mary and Joseph were trying to find Jesus? Frantically they searched all over the city of Jerusalem. Finally they found their little boy sitting among the scribes and the teachers in the temple. Remember what Jesus said to them? It's recorded in Luke 2, verse 49. And Jesus said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? You see, for Jesus, God's temple was more than a building. The temple was supposed to be more than a shopping mall for the Israelites, or a center for learning, or a place to bring their sacrifice. The temple was to be God's house here on earth. It was to be a very special and sacred place designed for both man and God to enjoy fellowship. As Jesus began to walk around the temple, he was appalled by what he saw. Instead of his father's house being a place of prayer and worship, it had become a hangout for money changers. 
So Jesus starts to set things back in their proper order. The temple is his father's house, and as God's only son, Jesus started clearing out and cleaning up. Humans were to reflect God's glory and image. So too the temple was designed to reflect God's heavenly kingdom, which of course meant that it needed to act more like heaven. And cheating people, focusing on money, keeping people away from being able to be with God was not what heaven was about. Today we have spring cleaning. Now spring cleaning is a long, slow, tedious process. It takes patience and hard work. So does spiritual house cleaning. What can we do to make sure that when Jesus comes, we're ready to sit down and spend some time connecting with him? We need to remind ourselves of two very important things when it comes to spiritual scrubbing and polishing. One, we are to scrub our own spiritual houses. We don't need to go around the neighborhood or the office and see whose lives need a little cleaning up. As my mother used to tell us as children, sweep your own doorstep first. We all have enough work to make sure our own rooms are clean without being a cleaning inspector for everyone else. The same rule applies to our spiritual lives. Jesus reminds us in the Sermon on the Mount that we can't fall to the temptation of looking at the sawdust in our friends' lives when we have a whole mess of beams in our own. Cleaning our spiritual houses is a team effort, you and the Holy Spirit. On your own, you will not be able to clean out your house or your life. We don't have the power to see all the things that need to be cleaned, nor do we have the ability. Only the Holy Spirit can cleanse, purify, and transform if we're going to truly do some soul scrubbing and soul polishing. So with that in mind, let's see what we can clean up this morning. <coughs> Soul cleaning means we're able to scrub away the things that enslave us. Things like the stain of negativity. We can at times have a negativity problem, especially in a year like the one we've just been through. We can focus so much on sin and on the events of the day that we forget that after Good Friday, our Jesus was raised from the dead, which means that all sin can be forgiven and all people's lives can be transformed. Yes, this world we live in has problems. That hasn't changed since the beginning of time. Just look at the lives of those prophets and leaders in the Old Testament. They all experienced impossible tasks, but with God, nothing is impossible. Jesus stands victoriously beside his heavenly Father and has sent his Holy Spirit to guide, teach, cleanse, and empower us. Just listen to the words of Romans 8, 35 to 39. Can anything ever separate us from God's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. The mold of the world. In our area of the world, mold can become a serious problem. It's not uncommon to see mold growing on the side of houses during certain times of the year. Every so often we clean the mold off. If we don't do that, the mold would begin to take over and become a health problem. It is the same in other areas of our lives. If we are not careful, the mold of the world's thinking and actions will creep into our lives. It can happen without us even realizing it. We start reading certain blogs, articles, or books, and before we know it, the world's mold is creeping in. We watch certain shows and absorb their philosophies, and before we know it, the world's mold is changing our lives. We start hanging out with the wrong people, and before we know it, we not only have lost our witness, but we have taken in their way of thinking. And then sometimes we have to allow the Holy Spirit to declutter our lives of certain things that can sicken our hearts and our souls. Spiritual cobwebs and dust bunnies. Dust bunnies, those little bits of hair, dust and dirt that seem to land and collect everywhere. Move your couch and there they are. Slide out your refrigerator and there are some more. Dust bunnies can be anywhere and everywhere. We've got to do the same with other things in our lives. Little spiritual dust bunnies like foolish conversations, wrong attitudes, and ego trips. 
can harm us. Those barriers we put up because we don't want to forgive someone, or we have allowed our anger to get the best of us, or we're nursing some kind of resentment. The truth is, most of us have some type of spiritual dust bunnies. We have those times when our eagers get bruised and we don't get our way, we begin to pout, sulk, and hide away. We don't like it when someone steps on our toes or says something that we don't like. We get our dander up and we begin to put up walls and barriers. We dry out our powder so the next time we see them we can have all the ammunition we need. We all need a good soul scrubbing now and then and this season of Lent provides us an excellent time to do it. It allows us a time to look at our attitudes and to see if we're allowing negativity to creep in and then to allow the Holy Spirit to do some scrubbing, cleansing, and transforming. Now, where does all this spiritual scrubbing lead us? It leads us to spiritual polishing. We're not finished just because we've allowed the Holy Spirit to help us scrub away all the spiritual dirt, the mold, and the grime. There are, is a wonderful second step. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to help us polish up our lives, which allows us to shine as one of God's amazing lights. The Holy Spirit will help us polish up our commitment. The devil loves it when the shine of our commitment becomes dull and lackluster. That happens when we begin to grow lukewarm, when we allow other things to get in the way of our personal spiritual habits of studying God's Word, attending worship, praying, and living out a life of progressive holiness. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to help us put the shine back in our commitment and to bring back the joy of worship, study, connecting with God and one another. When that happens, our light for God shines for everyone to see. The Holy Spirit will help us polish up our integrity, our purity and honesty so we can shine as a bright light. The devil will do his best to destroy our character and to get us to slip and become dishonest, less transparent and blind to our own flaws. The more we allow the Holy Spirit to clean and polish us, the more we will enjoy God's company and the company of others. The more we will be transformed into who God wants us to be we will find ourselves forming a whole new way of looking and thinking about things. Paul talks about such a mindset in Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. The mindset of Jesus speaks of agape love. Mark 10, 43 to 44 describes it well. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Apostle Paul had this mindset. Paul knew what it meant to do some soul searching. He knew what it meant to allow the Holy Spirit to have access to his inner life and be transformed and live that life in which people saw Jesus. He knew how to slow down for others and help them in their faith journey. Over the years, I've noticed something very important. To deep clean, you can't be in a hurry. It takes time, patience, and hard work. The same is true with polishing. But the end game is amazing. A clean house is a joy to live in. A polished car is a joy to drive around. A clean life and a life that's been polished by the Holy Spirit, it was one that shines brightly for our Lord. The prophet Malachi wrote the last book of the Old Testament. In chapter 3 of his writings, the prophet teaches us about God's refining fire. Malachi 3, 2-4, but who will be able to endure it when he comes? Who will be able to stand and face him when he appears? For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal, or like a strong soap that bleaches coals. He will sit like a refiner of silver, burning away the dross. He will purify the Levites, refining them like gold and silver, so that they may once again offer acceptable sacrifices to the Lord. This season of Lent allows us the time to go through God's fire. Time for the Lord to use that fire and to cleanse us of our right unrighteousness and then to put polish and a shine on us so others may see Him. This morning as we come to a close, will we allow the Lord to come into our lives with His holy scrub cloths and scrub away those areas of our lives that need a cleanup? Will we ask God to help us shine with a Holy Spirit radiance that causes others to ask us why we have so much joy peace and love.